Hello! Today we are going to talk about South America, specifically Peru and Ecuador, where I have been before. And we're going to be looking at alpacas and llamas, which are related to camels, and their wool is used for blankets and clothing. And the clothing is going to be our other focus. So you can see here a little bit. So the people in these countries wear brightly colored materials and wear ponchos to keep themselves warm. Now, when I was in Ecuador, one of my favorite things to do was to shop. When I was at some of the markets, I picked up some of these items. So I want you to see the beautiful fabric, a doll. Again, this would be like the material they were talking about for the ponchos. This is a small painting. You can see the back signed. And also things that are carved. And you can see some llamas or alpacas in here. And also in this barrette, you can see the llamas and alpacas. So we're going to use the llama and the alpaca as our focus. And then the fabric will also be in the details. And I'm going to read you a book today called Carolina's Gift, A Story of Peru. And this combines all of the things we're talking about and more. And we're going to see what a typical market is like in Peru. Carolina lives with her family in an old adobe house in the village of Pizac in, uh, in the Andes Mountains of Peru. Carolina loves to ride horses and play with her pet llama. See how the mother is weaving here? She's got a loom tied to the tree and she's actually weaving with her spools of wool probably from the llama. One Sunday, Carolina gets up very early. She wraps a manta over her shoulders and puts on her favorite hat. Today is market day at the plaza, and Carolina must find a gift for her grandmother, Abuelita. Vamos, mamá, Carolina calls. We ha only have one day before Abuelita's birthday. Little guinea pigs. <laughs> Carolina and mama cross the stone bridge and walk down the narrow, winding cobblestone streets that lead to the plaza. The sound of pipes and flutes echo through the village. It feels just like a fiesta, Carolina says, or a party. The plaza is already crowded when they arrive. Carolina and her mother buy sweet rolls at the bakery stand. What shall I get, Abuelita, Carolina asks. Look around, Mama tells her. That will give you some ideas. Oh, look at the beautiful pottery. Flores, shouts a vendor, flowers. Carolina knows that Abuelita loves flowers, but she has the same flowers in her garden. Look at the beautiful colors and patterns. Hats hang from a stall and swing in the morning breeze. All the hats have a little flower. The hats are pretty, but Carolina knows that they are not for Abuelita. These hats are worn by women who are not married and are looking for a husband. Nearby, a group of women argue with a farmer over the price of eggs. Even the chickens and turkeys join in and squawk loudly. So this might be a typical market where you're getting, you could be getting chicken eggs and different crafts made by artists, fruits and vegetables. Musicians play the quenya and the haunting sounds of these cane flutes fill the air. Women and children dance and sing traditional ballads just like their Inca ancestors did many years ago. Carolina and her mother join in. Carolina looks at the birds chirping and screeching away in their cages. Abuelita already has a parrot, Pepita. Pepita talks too much, even at night when Abuelita and Abuelo are trying to sleep. And they've got jewelry for sale. Carolina and her mother watch a family of weavers twist wool into thread. Carolina looks at the colorful ponchos, belts, purses, sweaters, and blankets for sale. Everything is very pretty, Carolina says to the weavers, but there is nothing here for Abuelita. So they have their wool here. Now, it could be cotton, of course, but a lot of these items would be from the llama or the alpaca, and they're twisting them into spools that those can then later be woven. The wood carver is new at the market. Mama, look, Carolina shouts. If we buy Abuelita a walking stick, she can come to the market with us. Carolina picks a walking stick with a beautiful hummingbird carved on the handle. Carolina has enough money and pays the wood carver. Then Carolina and Mama cross the plaza and leave the lively Sunday market. Carolina can't wait until next Sunday when she and Mama and Abuelita will all go to the market together. 
The next day, there is a party for Abuelita's birthday. Happy birthday, Abuelita, everyone shouts, Feliz cumpleaños. Then Carolina gives her grandmother the gift. <gasps> Gracias, mijita, Abuelita says. You have gotten me the perfect gift. That was very thoughtful. Carolina really thought about that. So this tells you a little bit here about Peru. And you can see the map and some of the words we saw, like Feliz cumpleaños means happy birthday. Manta means a shawl. That's what she threw around her shoulders in the beginning of the book. And mijita means my dear. Isn't that nice? So we are going to be drawing a llama or alpaca. And I say either one because they have both there and they're fairly similar. And I'm gonna show you an image that you will be able to see, which is this one, a how-to step. And I'm gonna draw along with, uh, to show you how. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more of a close-up. You could do a whole body as well. And you are going to also incorporate some kind of these fabrics or decorations. So you can see here in this one, it's got some, some fabric. I'm gonna use a black marker so you can see it really well. But of course, you should use some pencil. So if you make a mistake, you can erase it. So I'm gonna lift that up a little bit. And I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do mine vertical. I'll do it like this. So I chose a picture that was a little bit more realistic than this one, but it's your choice how you make it. So I'm gonna start with the nose, because I think that's the easiest thing is to start with the middle of the face. And I'm gonna start it pretty big here. You could always take your pencil and do kind of an outline of the head and neck to get an idea of how big you want it. So with the nose, it almost looks just like two little jumps together like that, right? And then it curves down, curves down, and then it jumps again and goes down and comes back up. So there's my little nose. And of course, my little, my little alpaca. This is gonna be an alpaca. He's a lot fuzzier, I think. It's gonna curve up and make a little smile, just like a little swoop and going the other way. And then for this nose, I'm just gonna kind of make not a perfectly round, kind of giving it a little wiggle to it so it looks a little fuzzy. And there's the bottom of the muzzle kind of going around the mouth and up there. Now for the eyes, you can do it more simple. You can do it more complicated. I'm gonna start right about here in the middle and I'm gonna make two hills, one, two, just like that. And then I'm gonna connect it with a little smile. Zoop, zoop. Then for the eyes, it's almost like I'd see a full circle except I'm missing the top part. So like I'm drawing the bottom of a circle and I like how they leave the little white highlight in there. So they have that little inner circle, baby circle, leave a white highlight and then you color that center pupil in black and then you can pick a color for your llama's eyes or your alpaca's eyes. So now I'm gonna give them a little little fuzzy head. I'm just kind of, I would maybe draw that line in pencil first and then you go along it with your little fuzzies. You could add eyelashes. You can have fun stuff if you want. The ears really just look like a, a letter V to me. I'm just gonna make it a little bit of a shaky line so it looks nice and furry. And the cheek kind of rounds out like this. Little wiggly line here, wiggly line here. I drew mine really big. You might want to do yours a little bit smaller little wiggly line going down. And I might have mine wiggle and then go a little bit off because I want to show some of that, maybe a poncho has been thrown over the back. So I'm actually going to draw that little line there. And sometimes they have some of the little tassels hanging too, or even a decoration on the head. You'll see some examples after the video and you can add some in. I'm going to add some little tassels on here, just making three little lines. And I'm going to look at the picture here to get some ideas of patterns. So you can see some wonderful zigzags. Look at this one as like triangles overlapping each other. So you can do some things like that. This one looks like chevron where it's just um, kind of a V shape. Here it looks like diamonds repeating. So I'm gonna do a few different ones. I'm gonna start with a few thin stripes. So I'm looking at some of them and I'm seeing some of the thin stripes and then I'm gonna make a thicker one. And then there, I think I'll do some of the, the zigzag and then just make little ones inside and make it a little bit busier. A couple more skinny lines. And then maybe here I'm gonna do mixtures of three. I'm seeing a lot of straight lines, a lot of geometric lines. So I could add something across here. I might add the little tassels where I'm gonna make almost ovals. 
and then fill those in with the lines because those will be made with yarn and those can come down. Now that you could do lightly in pencil and then color over it. Color carefully, you could do the Andes Mountains in Peru behind it, or you could do a solid color, or you could make it a pattern. What if the whole background had the patterns of the fabric and maybe your alpaca didn't have anything on it, but it was the background that had all of these wonderful colors and designs. There's no wrong way to do this and don't worry about making mistakes. Ours should all look different. Good luck.